Hi everyone, this is a short screencast for F6 uh, taxation IRA covering chapter 11 uh, of your BPP study text, uh, local property tax. So the first question for us is, what is uh, local property tax? And basically it's a tax that replaces uh, what was known as the household charge. Um, now it's an annual tax introduced in uh, uh, or from 2013. And effectively, it's a tax uh, uh, that charges the residential uh, uh, property value. In other words, the market value of a residential property. Um, it does apply to um, uh, companies and individuals, but for our purposes, for F6, um, generally speaking, I would suggest that it will be included uh, as part of an individual question, but it can apply to companies also. Okay. So this tax is, uh, in effect, payable uh, um, annually uh, from 2013 um, by either individuals or companies. And one key point here is that the tax is payable uh, on residential properties only. In other words, not commercial properties. So that's one little trick to watch out for you in your exam. It will not apply to commercial properties, only residential properties. I guess the next point is, you know, who is liable to pay it? And you'll see from your text you have a, a variety of um, possibilities here, quite a long list. Now, I think that uh, probably the first few, the first three or four, are probably the, uh, the ones that are most likely to be examined. Um, and this first area of owners. So as you would expect, what, you know, whether or not an individual is resident or lives in Ireland, if they are an owner of um, Irish residential property, then they are going to be liable for the tax. Okay. Um, watch out for this area here, where we have a, um, a landlord uh, obviously owning a, a, a property, and the property is under a short-term lease, in other words, less than 20 years, then the landlord is liable. Um, uh, contrast that to a property um, that's under a lease, uh, which would be classified as a long lease, i.e. more than 20 years, then the leasee, i.e. the tenant, would be liable. One or two others there that may be of interest, for example, uh, uh, local authorities or indeed uh, social housing organisations. But I would have thought, you know, um, owners uh, and indeed either landlords or, or lessees subject to the length of the lease are the ones that we would face within the exam. I think the other ones are a little bit uh, um, uh, too obscure for uh, uh, to be examined. Okay. Um, if we move down the page, then, um, you know, if we accept the fact that uh, uh, we're dealing with residential properties, we've got a, a new tax, uh, certainly some people will not be overly pleased about, um, and it's on the market value of the property. So, you know, how do we deal with it? In other words, how does an individual that, uh, let's say, uh, owns a property, um, how do they uh, pay the tax? What do they need to do? Well, it's already based around this, what we call this uh, return form, in other words, an LPT1, a little bit like a, a, a sort of a, a self-assessment return for income tax purposes. And this, as, as we see here, you know, is a self-assessed tax. So, you know, what does that mean? Well, it basically means that the liability or the onus is on the individual uh, to calculate the tax due and uh, indeed to submit a tax return uh, to the relevant uh, 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 local authority. Okay, so what do they need to do? Well, let's just say that the individual owns a property. The first thing that they need to do is establish the market value at a given uh, date, and I'll, I'll come back to that uh, in a moment. Um, once we have the market value, they have to look to the tables. In other words, there's a table that will be provided with in the exam that will show you a set of bands. So in other words, you are uh, relating the market value of the property to a set of bands to calculate the uh, local property tax due, due. The next thing that they need to do is, is obviously to select how they're going to pay, and there's a number of different options there. And then the next thing is basically to submit uh, a completed return. So in essence, the onus is on the individual. They have to establish the MV themselves. They apply that MV to uh, a band to calculate the tax due. And then basically, they simply pay the tax due with the uh, with, with a completed return. Okay. Um, now, I mentioned dates earlier on. Um, one thing to bear in mind here is that the, uh, uh, the person that pays the tax, in other words, the individual who is responsible for paying the tax, is the person who owns the property at what we call the ownership date. 
you know, and this is a little bit unusual. And uh, what you'll see here is that the ownership date is basically 1st of November in the preceding year. So, for example, for uh, 2014, the ownership date is the 1st of November 2013. So you'll see in this example below, we have this individual called John. Uh, they own a residential property uh, on the 1st of November 2013. Effectively, John is liable for the uh, LPT for 2014, in other words, for the following year. So, in other words, even if John sells the property after that date, after the 1st of November, he's still liable for 2014, and that may well have an impact on people selling the properties and prices, etc., as you'd, as you'd appreciate. So, you know, this point here is really key for us. You know, we're looking for um, whoever owns the property on the 1st of November in the previous year, and they will be liable for the following year. A little bit unusual, and that's the sort of thing that... Uh, I would expect an examiner to test, uh, in other words, give you a perhaps a change of ownership uh, uh, during or just before the year. So just watch out for that. That's the first really key point outside of uh, perhaps the, the issue of its uh, residential property um, only. Okay. Um, now, uh, we mentioned uh, um, application of uh, uh, or relating market values to bands, uh, and that brings us into this area of, well, you know, how much do you have to pay? Yeah. So um, I, I think the first thing to bear in mind here is that, albeit for the fact that we have a, a, a sort of an unusual uh, system uh, I, in terms of establishing who is liable, i.e. it's the person that owns the property on the 1st of November uh, in, in the previous year, we also have a slightly unusual system in terms of um, valuation. In other words, establishing that market value. And really, the key point uh, to remember here is that, you know, given that the uh, uh, the tax was introduced as at 2013, the valuation date, in other words, the MV, is calculated as at the 1st of May 2013. And that valuation will apply, um, notwithstanding improvements to the property, but I don't think that's relevant to, for our purposes. That valuation will apply from 2013 all the way through to 2016. So in effect, what we're saying is that uh, um, an individual, let's, say, let's just say that they own a property in uh, 2013, they own it on the 1st of May 2013, and they own it for the next five to six years. Well, that valuation on the 1st of May 2013 will apply for each of the years through to 2016, that same market valuation. So that's really a key date for us. We need to know what the property is valued at as at 1st of May 2013. And I'll take you through the calculation just below in a moment, but in essence what we're saying is that uh, you know, with that May 2013 valuation, we really look to the tables and apply either 0.18% uh, um, up to uh, 1 million and then after that 0.25 to that May 13 valuation. So you'll see that uh, down below we have some details or some figures for um, 2014. And in, in essence, what you have is a, a, a sort of a, a set of bands. So what you're required to do in order to calculate the liability, let's just say for 2014, is really take that May 2013 uh, valuation and look to the bands. In other words, um, in effect, if we're saying that the property is worth, let's say, 375, that is within this band here of uh, uh, 350 to 400. Now, the midpoint value is 375, and that's the value that we take. So, in other words, if the valuation uh, MV at uh, May 2013 slots in here, then we take 375, it's less than a million, we apply 0.18, and that gives us the figure that's payable. Okay, so you know, practice is key with these questions, so do look for questions to do the calculations uh, um, um, over and over again if you can. Okay, um, now I'll take you through one or two examples just below, but in essence, what we're saying is that this uh, table, uh, this set of bands, which will be provided to you in the exam, you can check your tables in your BPP study text from the page 315 onwards. So you'll have these tables in the exam, and all you'll be looking to do is just to get the valuation. Um, as at 1st of May 2013, and look to see which band it is in, and then find the midpoint rate, obviously 
uh, uh, the rate of 0.18, you actually have the figure here. So in other words, you have your figure. All you're looking to do is find the right bound. So in terms of um, you know, some examples, let's uh, have a look at this one here, this example one. You know, we have a residential property uh, that has a value of 860 as at the uh, 1st of May 2013. So if we go up to the tables, what we'll see here is that 860 slots in between 850 and 900, obviously. The midpoint value is 875, and we were just given the figure. Um, we're applying, obviously, uh, 0.18%, and we see 1575. So as you'll see from the uh, answer here, uh, midpoint value 875, and the full year liability for 2014, and indeed each subsequent year to 2016 is simply, uh, as per the tables, 1575. Okay. Um, now, if you look uh, down at uh, uh, the next example here, again, pretty straightforward, although this one uses a, a higher valuation, you'll see that the, uh, uh, the residential property value as at 1st of May 2013 was 1.86 million. And you remember what I said above, you know, up to uh, uh, 1 million, we're going to be using 0.18, and then after that, 0.25. So, as you'll see here, at 1 million, in effect, we're saying that uh, uh, the valuation is going to be in this band, we're looking at 0 point, or sorry, uh, 975 times 0 0.18, giving us 1755. So that's the first part of it. And then really this, the balance is going to be uh, at 0 0.25. So you'll see here, uh, the valuation exceeds 1 million. LPT uh, all the way through is simply going to be uh, uh, 0 point, uh, or 1 million times 0 0.18 um, plus 860 times 0 0.25. So, in essence, then, we've got a figure of um, 397. Okay. So, moving on from there, um, a couple of points about filing and dates uh, for payment, etc. here. Um, the due date. Now, you remember what I said above is that, in effect, um, the 2013 valuation is valid all the way through to 2016. So, in effect, what we're saying is that uh, that return, so the return for um, 2013 has to be filed by these dates, uh, you know, on paper, uh, 7th of May, online, 28th of May. Okay, so fairly straightforward. Those are the sort of dates that we need to remember. Um, in terms of payment, or due date for payment, the 2014 uh, payment is due 1st of January, so effectively in advance. You remember that's based on the individual who owns the property on the 1st of November in the previous year. So a variety of different options here, um, you know, cash 1st of January, monthly direct debit. You know, these are the sorts of things that we just really need to rope learn. We don't have this information um, in the table. Okay. Um, I'll draw your attention to one or two things that I haven't included in this uh, uh, short screencast. And uh, uh, the first refer uh, refers to exemptions from this tax. In other words, exemptions from LPT. There are a number that you'll see within your text. You know, for example, first time buyers or indeed people buying new and unused properties. They would be completely exempt from the tax. Um, also, um, we have a, a deferral arrangement whereby, uh, subject to the individual's income, uh, a deferral of the tax is available. So I draw your attention to that within your text uh, uh, as well. So essentially, there are one or two ways which a, uh, an individual can get out of paying for the tax. So I would suggest that we simply um, rope learn those. Okay, so really in summary here on LPT, um, key points for me really are that uh, it, it's certainly a new tax from 2013, uh, residential properties only, uh, generally speaking on um, owners or indeed uh, landlords where we have a, a, a short lease, um, lessees or tenants where we have a long lease. There is a requirement to um, uh, submit a return in LPT1. Bear in mind that date of the 1st of November in the previous year. So if you are the owner as at the 1st of, no at 1st of November in the previous year, you will be liable for the following year regardless of what happens. Uh, and in addition to that, you know, watch out for the valuation date, in other words, the market value. So in essence, what we're saying is that we're agreeing the market value um, in advance, you know, we're agreeing it as at 1st of May 2013, and that's the same market value going forward to 2016. So even if the property, uh, in effect, changes hands or rises in value due to the market, 
uh, we're saying that that market value is agreed as at May 2013, and whoever holds the property or owns the property as at the 1st of November each year will be liable to pay at that market value. Okay. Um, do note the, the requirement to pay uh, on, on specific dates, the standing order arrangement or direct debit. Uh, and also, finally, just note that uh, there are ways for individuals to get out of the tax. They can be exempted if they're FTBs or they're buying uh, a new or completely unused property, or indeed they could possibly defer subject to their income levels. Okay, so do check that within your text. I hope that uh, this short uh, screencast has been helpful and uh, good luck with your studies. Cheers. Bye.